ladies and gentlemen, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Rule the Waves, uh, the grand strategy game that puts you in the shoes of a Grand Admiral during the infamous naval arms race period of 1900 to 1925. In this game, we are now on turn two. It is February of 1900. We're playing as Japan. Um, the last couple of videos have kind of walked you through how we got to where we're at as far as building our ships, organizing our fleet, moving things around, um, and our initial construction plans, setting up our initial intel efforts, um, and then also just kind of talking about some of the general features, research, training, etc. In this video, I really quick want to go over some of the other kind of things that you need to keep an eye on as you're playing the game, as well as kind of progressing through the early stages of this game. So first off, there's a couple of different tabs that we haven't talked about. One of those is, ta is considered messages. Right now we have no recent turn messages. The other is intel reports, which will show up um, periodically. So if we went ahead and we click all, we have nothing here yet. Um, and then there's also an almanac. So let's take a real quick look at the almanac, because that's, that's something we haven't talked about yet. First of all, you have the ability to filter up top if you want to look at just one nation. Uh, you can go ahead and do that. Um, the almanac will give you detailed information on individual nations. So, for example, if we click Japan, we know the leader type is Prime Minister. The government is Eastern. That's the type of government it is. Uh, the build area, Northern Asia. It tells you our naval budget. Technological development says we're behind. So basically, we're behind other countries in our development of our naval technology. We have an underdeveloped shipbuilding industry. We do get the advantage of surprise attack. Our current dock size is 10,000. No oil, and then gives you some other information. We have an advantage in torpedo technology and double torpedo tube mounts. Um, base resources uh, from possessions, naval guns. So all the kind of initial stuff that... Um, the game shows you on that first screen when you're considering picking a nation, uh, in addition to the research level that we're at. Um, it also gives us a ship summary. So it tells us we have three battleships and two building, four cruisers, two building, uh, 12 light cruisers, two building, 32 destroyers, and four coastal batteries. Um, you can do that for any other nation. Um, so, for example, Germany's leader is the Kaiser, limited democracy. Um, you can scroll down, see where they're at with their naval guns. Um, they are, let's see here, I guess we don't get, oh, we're, they're a technology leader, okay. Um, we can do the same for Great Britain, who has 18 battleships in construction, uh, or 18 battleships in play. Uh, Germany has 8 in play, France has 10 in play, Russia has 11. USA has 13. Holy crap, that certainly wasn't the case in 1900. I guess they kind of accelerated the uh, battleship building program a bit versus where they were at in reality. Um, and Italy has nine. So we are by far um, a smaller fish when it comes to battleships. But the advantage that we do have is that we're pretty remote. Um, so again, you can see all these different... Looks like we might actually have the most destroyers, though. So huzzah for that. Um... We are the most remote, so you can see this information in the Almanac, where you can get all that different info for the um, different nations. You can also go ahead and click on all. You can see our naval budget is by far the smallest. The only one close to us is Italy, and they have about 50 million more per year. So we may have the smallest fleet, but we also have the smallest budget by far. Um, and then you can get a really neat kind of cross-section of the way the fleets are set up and the way that kind of things are trending. So right now there's not, no battleships or battle cruisers in construction by anyone. Those are dreadnought ships. Nothing has been built then yet. It's 1900. But if we scroll down here, we can see the traditional battleship. We have three in service. Um, you can see Germany, Great Britain, France, Russia, US, Italy. You can see where everyone is at. Um, but then you can also see what's building. So right now, yes, we're behind pretty substantially. The, only cl the closest nation to us is Germany, who has eight battleships, but they do have one under construction, so they'll have nine before too long. And then you can see that Italy has nine, but they have nothing under construction. Well, we have three, but with two under construction, we'll have five before too long, and we'll be closing the gap on some of those in terms of battleships. In terms of heavy cruisers, you can see the situation um, is much the same. Uh, we have two under construction, which is more than anybody else. Um, but we also only have four in service, which is by far fewer than anyone. We'll actually be close to the U.S. They'll be at seven. We'll be at six when we finish. Um, but everyone else is still pretty substantially ahead of us. Light cruisers were in much better shape, um, but our cruiser design isn't all that great. 
Um, and then destroyers again, we lead the way. No one has any AMCs or minesweepers. Um, AMCs are like converted merchantmen. Um, minesweepers aren't all that popular yet. Um, AMCs generally get pressed into service more often in wartime, less so in peacetime. Um, so you can see that's a really neat feature in my opinion in the game. Gives you kind of a broad overview of the naval arms race, where you're at, where others are at, um, and just kind of the general situation. You'll also notice that the monthly butt balance dropped from negative 900,000 a month to about 630,000 a month. So you can see our naval budget did increase between January and February. Um, and you can also see that our under construction ships have all grown one month closer to completion. Tensions remain the same, there were no events. And um, that's all we really have to report here at this point. So let's go ahead and end the turn. And you can see here, I didn't mention in the last video, um, because I kind of wanted to focus more on kind of the gameplay in this video. You can see here when we end February and we go into March, you get a turn, you get turn messages that come up. So it gives you some updates on different uh, countries and what they're doing. You can see here Germany, for example, is laying down a destroyer and they're also laying down a Brauchenschweig class battleship. So Germany will be building a battleship now, so that uh, fleet, uh, that almanac will update. Um, you can also see that Great Britain has laid down a pair of destroyers. France has laid down some destroyers. Russia has as well as a cruiser. Um, USA has laid down a destroyer. And the also there's some intelligence that says that newspapers in the U.S. are clamoring for the U.S. to build more armored cruisers. Um, it also says the U.S. has laid down an armored cruiser. And uh, there's some intelligence reports that Italy... Um, is having trouble with the principles of pressure hull, which I'm okay with because a pressure hull is critical to a submarine. Um, that's that ability to have a pressurized hull underwater. So that plays a big role in a nation being able to develop submarines. So if they're having problem researching that, all the better. I don't want other countries to have submarines. They're a nightmare to deal with. Um, now if we go in here, we can actually go ahead and um, filter those, th those are the turns that show up, or the messages that show up at the end of every turn. You can actually filter, um, you can just check the actual messages here, you can see what the turn was, but then there's also intelligence reports. So for example, May of 1900, uh, it said that uh, Italy is having, you know, trouble mastering the principles of pressure hull, and then in the future, if we want to be able to see what intelligence reports came in, this will stay here forever. The messages will not, they'll only stay there one turn, but the intel report, specifically the items that are listed as intel report, will have a date and they will stay there permanently. But that noise there, that uh, my dog was uh, moving and kind of making some noise. So if that showed up on the video, I apologize about that. I've been having some bad luck with some of my recording in the last two videos. But anyway, um, so that just about does it for the intel report and if we check the almanac again you'll see that Germany now actually has two battleships under construction with that last one that they're um, constructing and again they're gonna be closing in on uh, on France actually here when they complete those ships in addition to that it also gives you the total tonnage I didn't mention that before in the almanac of what they have in service and what is currently under construction Sorry, what is currently in service, um, and then also when it's complete, when the ships under construction are complete, what they'll have. Um, but yeah, I think that's about all we need to talk about now, so let's go ahead and advance to April. Um, you can see how scientists are reported that they're currently baffled by the problems of improved hydrostatic value. Um, so that's a, a problem we're having in some research and development that we're doing. Um, and again, every single turn you do get an update based on all these items. No new intel reports, um, just some additional ships that are being laid down. Um, and you can see how our monthly balance is slowly creeping toward the positive, which is a good thing. Um, also kind of feels like we're maybe other countries that weren't building battleships. Holy cow, Britain or France or Russia has three. Oh, never mind. Um, I thought it said something about France, though. Oh, just a cruiser, I guess. Oh, Russia has ordered a battleship in French shipyards. So that's actually something that was quite interesting. Um, during during kind of this period of time, Fr Russia actually purchased several of their modern battleships from French shipyards, um, which was rare for major powers, but Britain's shipyards churned out battleships for a bunch of South American countries. Um, Italy actually produced quite a few cruisers for Japan and some other major European countries as well, and France actually exported some battleships to Russia. Um, it's interesting, you saw a lot more 
um, major capital ships being built in a select few number of countries. Uh, today you see kind of the exact opposite, where in the past there were kind of these guardians of major shipbuilding or major industry, um, and other countries would really have no choice but to contract out. But today what you're seeing in a lot of developing countries is, sure, there's still a, a plenty of arms trade, but what you're often seeing is kind of countries that are saying, okay, we're going to buy weapons from you, are also often requiring, well, you know, maybe you can build two domestically in your shipyards. Then you have to send us kits, which are basically just you have to send us all the equipment so we can assemble some in our own shipyards. And then you have to give us licenses so we can build some of our own stuff domestically. Um, you see that a lot in India. Um, you see that somewhat in China, although China has done more unauthorized licensed construction locally you know they're doing it without paying for it often and um you're seeing that kind of in brazil too where they you know they wanted to open up a factory where they could build fighter jets locally and they'd maybe buy a design but they want to build everything locally and that makes sense because it gives you more security if you're able to build the items yourselves um, but it's just it's an interesting shift that you're starting to see in the arms industry whereas the early 1900s were the exact opposite and that was because you know these major imperial european powers were really the only countries with the resources and the know-how to do it and they weren't willing to share they weren't willing to sell it was mainly just you know we're going to do it the only exception you really saw to that was the u.s as it came onto the scene as a major a superpower except the u.s never really purchased any major warships from overseas they they built everything locally the only time you really had major warship construction overseas was for the confederacy during the civil war um, and most of those were impounded anyway okay so we just went ahead and we moved into may so we did get some additional intel reports you can see here may of 1900 um, italy has a new ship under construction of the regina megaretta class it's a battleship it has a belt armor of eight and a half inches 19 knots um, the new ship under construction a destroyer is rumored to carry three inch guns and they're still having troubles mastering the pressure hull so again good information to to have um, and I was wrong. These intelligence reports do go away after a given turn. Um, so again, not much more to report. Still in the red. Our scientists have hit a dead end in their effort to figure out the concept of hydraulic recoil. That's not good. Um, hydraulic recoil is kind of important um, for more rapid firing weaponry. And just kind of, you know, turn by turn, things are just kind of staying as is. Interestingly enough, we just saw a massive drop off in um, tensions with Russia. Not quite sure why, um, but I guess, you know, nothing bad happens for a while and tensions can drop. Okay, so this is what I was waiting for. Uh, August, we got our first event. So the German government is offering to sell us the rights to improved surface condenser for $3.4 million dollars. Um, should we buy what we can develop for ourselves or we need that technology and it seems like a reasonable price I'm gonna decline that right now because we have a balance that's in the red our balance is slowly going down And I'd like to be able to buy and build some ships But as it stands right now, we just don't have the money So I think I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna decline that offer that was the first event these types of things will pop up over time um, You can see here just kind of more shipbuilding uh, our the Tosima class uh, light cruiser was commissioned to the Navy the Russian government is offering to sell us rights to 7-inch guns of quality 0 for 4.6 million. Our current ones are negative 1. We can do without these unreliable foreign guns. Okay, so also, uh, Russia is apparently in, um, engaging in industrial espionage with Great Britain. Hopefully they fail because Great Britain has some of the best equipment in the game. We definitely don't want to see the Russians get their hands on that. Um, but now that we saw there was a ship that was completed, there's another element that you need to keep in mind with this game as things kind of go along. A little bit of a slow start to the game, but that's fine for all I'm concerned with as small as our fleet is compared to everyone else um, and with our budget situation. Um, you can see here the Tushima class uh, cruiser that we just commissioned, just commissioned into service, which is great. Um, we see that maintenance cost is going to apply against our balance, but our balance actually, our budget is increased. Um, but you can see the crew quality is poor. So everyone started out at fair originally, but they've all been training, um, so they're all up to good. But this crew quality is poor, and the status is not AF. Which AF stands for active fleet, instead it's WU, which is working up. 
basically they're going through ship they're going through um, trials new construction trials um, you know new crew trials basically they've got a new ship and they're just kind of getting it into shape so you don't want to engage ships in a working up status in combat also a poor crew quality will have another negative ass effect on the um, ability of a crew to um, fight effectively um, so those are things you want to keep in mind if a war does break out you also see the year of the ship is 1900, so it's the most modern ship in our fleet. Um, and we've got um, a couple other ships that are about to come into play as well here soon. Uh, we now have a positive monthly balance, which is also nice to see. But we haven't really developed much in the way of research yet, so I'm not sure if I really want to... Um, I just, I'm not sure if I really want to... Um, build anything right now because I don't want to just build junk that's you know obsolete because we haven't researched anything um, still if we're comparing where we're at with the rest of the world Germany's building four battleships Great Britain three France one Russia five Russia's gonna have 16 battleships before too long Err, I think we have to build another battleship our cruiser situation is pretty iffy too. Our heavy cruisers, our light cruisers are okay. We're doing okay there, and our destroyers are still fine. But I would say we probably need to build a battleship. Um, if we build another one, we'll have six. Still substantially behind, but again, the fact that we're out in the Pacific and everyone else is in Europe or North America does give us some advantages there because they're all much further away. Um, our heavy cruisers are... Wow, we're way behind there. And I actually like our heavy cruiser design. It's not bad. The Asuma class is not bad at all, in my opinion, anyway. So I think what we'll do is we'll build a um, Shakasima class battleship. It'll take 31 months. You can see here the build, time, build cost is 1.6 million per month. So that's actually going to hit our budget pretty heavily. Um... What's the build cost of the Asama? 1.4 million? Jeez. Fuji 1.5. I take that back. We're not going to build anything right now. It would just put us too far into the red. Research breakthrough. Machinery development. Improved surface condenser. Okay, so the item that we didn't buy for 3.4 million, we just um, were able to construct ourselves. So that's good. Um, so we're getting some intel reports on some ships that are under construction. I'm surprised we really haven't been hit much in the way with um, events. By the way, our budget didn't actually go up. What I forgot was as you complete your ships, as the construction completes on different ships, you get more money back on your monthly balance because you're no longer paying for them to be built. Again, you can see here three battleship or three ships are being built overseas, one locally. Um, building ships locally, I believe, does have an impact on your sh own shipbuilding industry in terms of like your dock size. Um, building them domestically can also, or at least events trigger that say, you know, we've had an influx of foreign orders, um, which will influence the, um, you know, dock size. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to build another ship. Um, actually, no, we're going to wait two months until our docks are upgraded to be bigger at that point, and then we can build some of these ships domestically, I believe. Um, so go ahead and do that. U.S. government's offering to sell us... Um, is that coincidence rangefinder for 4.7 million? I really would like to buy some of these. Yeah, we're going to buy that from the U.S. So we get a research breakthrough because we just purchased some fire control technology from the U.S. Um, I don't know if you can ever sell technology to other countries for money, um, but at least in this case we can buy technology and that'll help us catch up a bit um, in terms of our technological development. And then that does influence where we're at as far as um, ship designs. So again, you can see um, we're only one month away from our docks upgrading. We'll go ahead and we'll jump forward one more turn. And new docks are completed. There you go. You get that event. Um, our ship also is commissioned to the Navy. And another ship has finished working up. And our relations with Great Britain have taken a sudden turn for the worse. Well, that was weird. Our scientists report that they've hit a dead end in their efforts to figure out the concept of a seven-foot rangefinder. Okay. 
Um, I'm not sure why our relations with Great Britain took a hit. It is a little bit concerning because we do have two battleships under construction there, and they are uh, the country that we have the highest tension with. Um, so that's not good. Meanwhile, our ships are starting to come together. Um, we have finished 1900. We're into January of 1901. Our docks are now 12,000 tons, which means we can build some additional ships domestically, which with the sudden and unexplained uh, increase in tensions uh, with the British, we may want to consider building some of those ships locally. I keep waiting for more events to fire. Um, in my experience in the past, this game has been very rapid fire. You know, things are thrown at you real quick, and you can end up in a war real quick. But so far, things have gone a little bit slow, which I'm okay with, because it, it kind of lets me get my feet under me. Um, but I don't want it to be too boring, so hopefully we don't have to skip ahead and do anything um, in our next, you know, skip too much ahead in um, the next video, because I would like to, you know, have things happen. Um, maybe I'll design a new ship now that we've got a uh, better dock size and we've got some money to play with, $3.6 million a month. Um, definitely need to make sure we're catching up here. You can see uh, we're just really far behind in the in the naval arms race. But again, I wanted to build some of those things in Britain, but I'm not I'm not sure what we're going to do because of those tensions. Well, I guess we could build them in the U.S. Um, they have some pretty good docks, and we have very limited tensions with them. I really would like to fight a war against Russia um, because they've got those local colonies that we can take advantage of. You know, part of the problem with fighting a war with Germany, for example, is they've really only got a couple of... Well, Germany wouldn't be a bad war to fight either. They've got some colonies in the Pacific. I really have no desire to try and take colonies in this far away, you know, in Africa or um, North Africa or, you know, South America. I have no desire to take any anything like that away from anyone that's just too far from where we are right now. Uh, but again, some a war against Germany or um, Russia would be ideal. France and Britain are just too strong right now with their navies. We've got too many large fleets deployed in our area. Um, Japan could have local supremacy, maybe. Um, again, certainly against Germany. You can see there, G Germany only has an estimated two cruisers in the Pacific. Um, it doesn't even look like it says Russia has anything, which seems odd. Um, Germany does have uh, an additional cruiser in Southeast Asia, but basically Great Britain has a bigger fleet in Asia than, <laughs> than, uh, than our total fleet. So we don't want to fight that, and France actually has several battleships deployed to Southeast Asia as well. Um, so that's something we got to be careful with. But anyway, um, eating up time here. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cut this video off, and then hopefully next video we've got some more interesting things to talk about. If not, I'll uh, start kind of talking about historical um, discussions and topics, which I certainly want to mix in more with this uh, with this series as well um, to keep things interesting and, um, you know, engaging. Anyway, um, I apologize for some of those loud noises which you probably heard throughout the game. Or throughout the game, like I said, that was my dog moving around. Um, but I will strive to do better next time. And I appreciate every everyone tuning in. And until next time, this is the historical gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.